Hi SciChart users, um, today I'm going to show you a new feature which has been included in SciChart WPF version 5 which was released a few weeks ago and the feature I'm going to show you is the filters API. Um, so this API has been added to the SciChart library because a lot of users requested the ability to um, add things such as simple linear trend lines, polynomial filters, um, scaling offsetting, um, as well as moving average or low pass filters. So we created a generic API that would allow you to do all sorts of filter and functions on your data series built into the chart. You can see this in the SciChart WPF examples app. So if you go ahead and download uh, the examples app for version five and in the search bar type filter, you'll see the filters API example. And in this example, we have a number of series, but there is one original data series, and that is this one. So we have some data which has got a little bit of a cubic shape and some randomness. So we've tried to generate some data that looks a little bit like a typical scatter plot that you might get in uh, some sort of scientific uh, study or so on and so forth. And then we've created a number of filters uh, on, onto this. Um, so the first one, the most simple is linear trend line. Um, so if I enable this here, you can see that we now have a linear trend line cutting through the middle of the data. Um, and we also have a polynomial trend line. Um, this is a third order polynomial, um, which actually fits the data very, very nicely. Um, and you would expect it to because that's how we've generated the data. Um, in addition to these two filters, uh, I've shown uh, in this example a, a simple one about scaling and a spline as well. So this one is scaled 0, 0 0.5 uh, and there is a spline filter as well. So spline interpolation and this has got uh, in five points interpolated between each point, uh, potentially equals five. But uh, actually what this means is that there are five points in between each actual data point and we're spline interpolating. Um, you can configure that number. Uh, a simple offset filter. So here we've offset minus 50 from our original data and uh, there is a custom filter as well and the custom filter in this example actually is a sort of a moving average or smoothing type filter but we've included it to show you how to make a custom filter um, as well. Now one of the beneficial things about the filters API is if the original data updates all the filters update as well. So in this example we've got uh, this options where we can change the randomness of the data and that changes the amplitude of the randomness or we could change the slope of the data and as you can see as we change these parameters all of the filtered series update but we're not recalculating these in the example what we're doing is um, we are deriving them off of the original data series so let's go go ahead and have a look at the source code of this filters example so we can show you how to implement this in your own applications using SciChart version 5 with a blank WPF application in Visual Studio, I'm going to install the SciChart package from NuGet. If you haven't done so already, you will need to set up the SciChart NuGet feed as a private NuGet feed in Visual Studio. You do this by going to Tools Options, NuGet Package Manager and Package Sources and ensure that you have the SciChart NuGet feed set up here. Once you've done that, simply type install package SciChart to download the libraries. With the SciChart libraries installed, you can go ahead and start coding. We're going to create our SciChart surface in XAML first. Now in code behind, we're going to add the code that we need to create our data.
If we go ahead and run our application now, we should now see the original data on the chart. There we go. So we have our chart with the curved data set, which is slightly random, and now we're going to apply some filters to it. So the process to add filters is really simple. First of all, you need to include the namespace scichart.charting.model.filters. So we're going to include this namespace at the top of the, of the file here. Now this namespace contains a number of extension methods which can transform a data series into a filtered data series. So the first filter we're going to create is a linear trend line. So we'll start off like... That's all that you have to do. The filter returns a data series as well. This data series is derived from the original data series. If you manipulate the data in the original data series, the filter data series will also update. Let's add a renderable series to the chart so that we can visualize this trend line. And let's go ahead and run this app again. So now we see that the linear trend line has been added to the application. Our original data is below and the trend line above. Let's add a polynomial trend to this now. And go ahead and run the app again. Now you can see we have our original data series as well as a trend line and a polynomial trend. All sorts of other filters can be created. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly add a scale filter, an offsets filter and a spline filter before we move on to looking at our custom filter. Let's go ahead and run our application again. So now you can see the original data series, which is the scatter series, um, but you can also see a linear trend line, a polynomial trend, a 50% scaled output, a spline output, and we can see the offset here as well. And we can zoom in, we should be able to zoom in on this chart if we add the zooming and panning behavior and then you can see this in a little bit more detail. There we go, zooming and panning has been added. And let's have another look. There we go, so you can see all of these filtered series. Now, these filtered series will update if the original data updates. So going back to our code, if you want to simply update the filters, all you need to do is change the values in the original data series. You can clear it, you can append new values, you can update, insert, remove, and all of the derived filters will recalculate and display as you would expect them to. We don't have time to add the updating of the data today, but if you remember from our examples app, if you search for the filters API example, you can see how we've done this in code so that you can see the updating of the data. The source code is viewable here in the examples app, and as well as that, the source code for our examples can be found on GitHub. If you go to the SciChart WPF examples repository, v5.x and examples, and drill down into the filters API folder, you can see how we've done this.